Hello everyone. Thanks for um, watching this video. Um, in this video, we're going to take a look at the um, uh, PAM 360's uh, new feature called self-service privilege elevation. We'll take a look at the, the scenarios or use cases during which this functionality would be quite helpful for you guys and also see how you can actually configure this feature in your own installation. So to begin with, the self-service privilege elevation capability works on an agent basis, which means you will have to download and deploy our agent in the target machine to allow users to be able to run particular applications or binary files or installers with a privilege elevated capability. And uh, you may already be aware of the existing capabilities of PAM360, like how you can discover resources or share resources with other people so that they are able to access the device without the knowledge of the passwords. Or in some cases, you would allow users to launch remote connections using their own Active Directory credentials, which will by default be a regular user. It would not have any elevated privileges like a local admin or a domain admin privilege. So in such cases, this self-service privilege elevation capability will allow you to provide a granular control for a certain set of applications to be used by that particular user with an elevated privilege. Um, a good example would be, let's say you have a database team and you have a database engineer who needs access to the actual database server, but you do not want the user to have full-on admin rights so that they are capable of uninstalling any components or applications running in that server. But at the same time, because they are a database engineer, you would allow them to use Microsoft SQL Studio with a highly privileged or elevated account so that they would be able to access the necessary databases and perform the necessary maintenance operations. But another use case would be, let's say you have users logging into their own devices or laptops or workstations in which they typically have read-only permissions. They do not have the ability to install any softwares or uninstall any software. But uh, from time to time, you would uh, have this requirement where the user will need to install a particular software. Now, typically, they would raise a ticket or they would contact your help desk, um, who in turn have to reach out to the user and help them installing the software, which, which is quite cumbersome. So with PAM 360's self-service privilege elevation, you can overcome that challenge by temporarily allowing the user to run certain applications or installables or even uh, batch files or PowerShell scripts with an elevated permission. So now I'm going to log into my installation um, and show you from where you can download this uh, self-service privilege agent. Now, you may already know that PAM360 can also perform password resets on different endpoints like Windows machines and Linux machines via agent. Now, uh, if PAM server in which you have the product installed does not have direct connectivity to those target machines, you would be using our agents, uh, which kind of acts like a one-way agent that communicates using outbound traffic from the target machine to reach the PAM360 server and help you in rotating the password. So we've combined the agent with the intelligence to do this password rotation and also help you with self-service privilege um, elevation. So if you go to the admin tab under the PAM360 agent section, you would find this C-sharp agent. Now this C-sharp agent, when you click on it, it will allow you to download the agent with a unique agent key. Now you have to copy this key so that you will be able to use it in the target machine when you install this. And you can also enable the setting on how long you want this agent key to be valid. Uh, if you are deploying this agent on a multiple machines, I would say you can set it up for a few hours so that the same can, the key can be used for deploying the agent on multiple boxes. After the installation, obviously the agent will rotate this key and randomize it with a new set of key so that it would be much more secure. So then you download the actual agent and uh, copy the zip file to the target machine in which you want to deploy the agent and uh, extract the zip file and you would find the bin directory inside which you will find the agent installer executable. Now if you were manually using this you could just right click that installer and just say run as administrator. Now this is where it's going to ask you for the key file 
um, which is required for the installation. So you just copy the key, paste it in the installation key. Uh, um, and then you have the installation path. If you would like to change the path to a more secure location, you could do that. And then you can click on next. And it asks you for what type of a box you're deploying this agent on. In some cases, you would deploy it on Windows machines if you want users to have elevated rights on Windows machines. Or if you're looking at your domain controller, where you want to allow somebody to log in as a regular user into your domain controller, but you would like them to use the Active Directory users and computers application using a domain admin level privilege. In such cases, you would select domain um, option, Windows domain option here. And then it shows you the server details, like the server in which your PAM application is running, the port number in which it is running. You could change it to 443 if you have already configured the application to run it in 443. But uh, the resource owner represents the, the owner under which this Windows machine is going to be listed. So they are uh, the owner, basically, who logged into PAM application and downloaded the agent. So in my case, I use the local admin account to download. So it is showing the admin account. If I had logged into PAM using my domain account and downloaded the agent, you would find my domain account listed here as the owner. But that can also be changed in case if you would like to replace the owner who will be administering this Windows endpoint. And then um, we have given new options for filtering accounts, like um, for example, you don't want PAM to discover all the local accounts in that box, and you would like to exclude any account that has the word printer in it or guest in it. You could supply those as well. These are part of the uh, account discovery capability and for password reset and rotation capabilities. And then in the modules option, you will find this drop down menu where you can select manage passwords and also self service privilege elevation. So we've given customers the choice to choose between these options. For example, if your target Windows machine is very much reachable from the PAM server and you're not really looking to use the agent for rotating passwords, obviously PAM can reset passwords in an agent less mode. So you could uncheck this option because PAM is going to directly connect to the machine and change passwords when it is required. Whereas for self-service elevation, this agent would be utilized. Or if the device is not reachable, obviously you could have both these options enabled because PAM is going to utilize this agent for rotating passwords and also to do self-service elevation. And uh, in the next page, it will basically check the test uh, uh, status, whether the, the server access is successful, whether the agent is installed. And then if you click install, it will basically deploy the agent in that particular target machine. Now, once you install the agent, so as you can see, it says agent installation successful, the self-service account installed and elevation is successful. You can exit the agent. Then we go back to the, the PAM server. And let's say, um, currently I've logged in as admin. I'm gonna log out and let's say I log in as another user. And uh, as that user, I've been given access to uh, that particular server in which I deployed that agent. So uh, I'm gonna log into that actual server. And uh, you can see I have an option to supply my own Active Directory credential and password and login. Some customers give this option. If all the domain account, the user accounts have read-only permission, they are allowed to log in directly, they would use their own account or you may have shared a guest account with that user. So uh, the user would be able to choose that particular domain account or a local account to launch RDP into that box. But before they log in, after you install the agent, you can configure which applications are authorized for self-service privilege elevation. So to configure that, you can select that resource actions icon right next to that device and go to self-service privilege elevation section. So in my case, I'm providing the elevation to happen using a domain account called administrator. And as you can see, I have some um, uh, devices or uh, uh, accounts uh, that, that can be elevated. So for example, I want the user to be able to run notepad.exe with a, a privileged elevated fashion or I want the user to learn Microsoft SQL Studio. So it is smss.exe. I want them to be able to run it with an elevated permission. 
or let's say word wrap. Um, apart from these EXEs, you could also supply the file names of the batch files or um, uh, shell scripts, um, any any form of executable um, that can be executed. So you can see the MSC files, MSI files. So for example, you want somebody to be able to install a product or a software without being a full-on local admin, you would obviously uh, provide that MSI installer's name here. And then you click on configure. So now that it is configured, the end user will log into PAM using their own Active Directory account and launch a remote connection to that target machine using either a shared account or using their own Active Directory account. So once you configure this self-service privilege elevation, the applications and the executables and installers, which you would like the user to be able to execute with the highly elevated privilege, the setting is basically configured from an administrator's perspective. Now the end user will launch a remote desktop session by logging into PAM. They would either use their own Active Directory account or they would choose a shared account that has been provided to them by their admin. But the point is, once they log in to that machine through RDP, whether using a regular user or a local account or whatever account that is supplied to them, the user will be able to look for those applications. So in my case, I have given notepad.exe as an authorized app that can be ran on an elevated privilege. So when I right click, when I say run as PAM360 privileged account, it would ask me for the reason why I am looking to run this application with a privileged uh, elevator account. So although I've logged into this as a guest user, I'm able to run this application with an elevated privilege where it will basically run that application using the domain admin account, which is configured by the administrator. So that's basically how you configure uh, our agent for self-service privilege elevation, how you configure the particular device or the Windows machine to support uh, self-service privilege elevation by selecting the account. Now, like I said, it could be a local account. If you want the user to run an app using a local admin account, you would obviously choose local admin here and whatever local admin account is present in that machine will be listed here. So you would be able to choose it and save it. So whenever the user right clicks those respective applications uh, and select the option run as PAM360 privileged account, it is going to run that app using that local admin account instead of the domain admin account. So uh, like I said, this functionality is quite handy. Uh, if you want somebody to be able to log in as a regular user and then run particular applications or installers with a highly privileged account. And um, when the account is executed, you would obviously see the details in our auditing area. You will see which user um, executed the app with a highly privileged account and the reason why they ran that application. It will all be recorded in our auditing area. We also have a couple of reports uh, that allows you to um, get the same information. You can um, check out our help page here. We will be sharing this help page link as well so you can see the same information listed in our help documentation. So you will be able to run these reports to find which apps were executed, which apps were tried to execute it that is unauthorized. So if a user is not allowed to run a particular app uh, with the elevated account, but if they have tried it, you will find those as well in our uh, reporting area. But um, yeah, that's pretty much how you deploy our PAM agent and help users run respective applications and installers with a highly privileged account. Thanks for your time and have a happy new year.